Okay, so now we've got one translated object. Um, and we said that the idea would be that we want to uh, create multiple objects that result in a kind of spiraling pattern. So instead of giving one value to our vector, we want to give multiple values. And we're going to use the same object that we used before to create lists. And if you remember what that is, go ahead and uh, drop that suggestion into the question window. And we'll, um, we'll use that object based on what you uh, suggest. All right, so we have some suggestions. I see series, and that's absolutely correct. That's what we're going to be using uh, to create our list of values. So that's found under sets, sequence, series, right? Now, what do we think we're going to use our V length value for uh, relative to the S, N, or C inputs on our object? The goal here is that we want to, say, move not one object in five units, but move this object five units, move another object 10 units, move another object 15 units. So that means that we're going to use, you've got it correct again, the step input, which is n. Right? So based on how it's most clear to you, you can rename this step. Uh, but since that's what I did in the um, reference files, I'll keep this as vector length. So now we have n defined for our series. And we also want uh, a slider to define how many rectangles we're going to produce. So let's go ahead and use our shortcut trick by double-clicking in the canvas. And I want at least one, current value of 50, maximum of 100. Hit enter, and now I can connect that up. Replace the input of my vector input, and now I have 50 rectangles going in that direction. Okay, great. Now what if I say rotate this one 0 degrees, rotate this one 5 degrees, 10, 15, 20, so that all of a sudden instead of them being in one long line, they'll start to wrap around to spiral. So we're going to use another type of transformation, um, which would be rotate, to define what's going to happen with the resulting moved objects. All right, so let's go ahead and find our rotate object. That's going to be under transform Euclidean rotate. All right, and this says it asks for the base geometry, the rotation angle in radians, and the rotation plane. So what we're going to rotate about. Okay, so I'm going to go here. And I'm going to take these two objects, my vector length and my series, and I'm going to copy and paste them. Okay, so now I'm going to be creating a second series. So these two objects together, these are my series objects. I give them labels. Right? The series objects, and instead of vector length, we're going to be defining rotation step. And this is going to be in degrees, so 2 degrees, 5 degrees, etc. Right? And I'm going to make sure that I share the same slider here, which is the number of objects I want to have. Okay, so we have one series defining our uh, vector lengths for moving. We're going to have another series that's going to be defining our rotation values. Okay, so. Um, the geometry that we want to rotate, that's the result of this object up here. So the translated geometry, that's going to go into G. The angle needs to be in radians. So if I'm more comfortable in working with degrees, which um, I'm going to guess that you are too, we need to, in between here and here, define this set of values to be as radians. So that's under math trig radians, it will convert our angle to radians from degrees. So let's drop that in, connect our series. So now we have radians rotation values, which we can use to define A. Okay. All right. So now what we have, if we turn the preview off of our 
moved objects is we now have our rectangles that are rotating in a spiraling pattern. And as I change my rotation value, that spiral either gets tighter or looser. So I want to go in here and increase the possible values here for each step. So now I can keep going tighter and tighter and tighter. I can have more or less, and I can have them be more compressed or expanded. All right, so somewhere around there I think is great. Because not only now do I have uh, two transformations that I can control independently, but I also have the opportunity to put whatever geometry I want here in this, uh, this container. Right? So let's take a second and let's label all of our files, uh, all the objects in our file. So this again was our Y vector. This allows us to convert from degrees to radians. This was the first step of our algorithm. Step A, which is to move. And this is the second step. Step B, which is to rotate. Right? So again, if we're talking about our algorithm and how it is developed incrementally, as opposed to all at once, we're not using an expression to find every location of every rectangle. We are first saying, let's do one uh, operation. Let's move some objects. Second, after we move them, let's rotate them. And I'm rotating them about the origin. Right? So again, what this does is this allows me to control each step of the algorithm. And I've arrived upon a spiral. Um, and maybe I didn't even um, intend to get there or know that that's where I was going ahead of time. And that's one of the major uh, differences between thinking algorithmically and thinking parametrically. When we're thinking parametrically, we always have to have a strong idea of where we're going. And then it's just about executing the steps until we get to that point. Algorithmic, if we're thinking algorithmically, we can break things down into smaller parts so that we can say, okay, well, I know that I want to move some objects, so I create multiples. I then want to rotate each object about a reference point and then I could even keep going, right? I could have a step C and a step D that would allow me to continue to develop each one of the uh, resulting bits of geometry as um, one member of this set of objects, which in this case are resulting in a spiral. Okay, so um, that's the uh, end of the second exercise. Again, this is our algorithm broken out into two steps that are based on translation, uh, sorry, transformations, uh, move and rotate. So um, let's take a second to address any questions you might have. Hopefully, now that we've done the spiral by the transformations approach, um, it's clear what the difference might be in terms of all-at-once processing versus um, incremental processing of our algorithms, and how we might uh, look at um, steps or layers to our algorithm as opposed to uh, predefining it uh, at the onset. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them into the questions window and we'll address them now. All right, we don't have any questions. So um, you guys are, are comfortable with uh, spiraling and algorithms, which is great. So I'm going to save this and uh, Move on to the next exercise.